Marbella. I'm Samantha Dragot for Soto Grande Television. We're here at the Marbella International Film Festival where we've seen films shown from all over the world over the last few days. And tonight is the big award ceremony. We're going to be taking you behind the scenes and interviewing some of the people involved with the festival. So it should be a great night. Yes, well, for me it's a very, a very big satisfaction to see that this project is going ahead year after year and uh, the commitment of MAC with the city and the project with the city, which is something very positive because we are talking about a project that uh, serves to, to the promotion of the city and also in cultural terms is very positive for the city. So we appreciate very much the effort that MAC is doing. He counts on our support. And we expect that year after year the project will grow and will be bigger on their, bene on their own benefit and on the, on the benefit of the So you feel that people are getting to see a, a new side of Marbella with the film festival? No, yeah, that's for sure. And even in terms of promotion for the city, because uh, after the, the film festival, the winners are going to be uh, to go all around the world with, using the name of Marbella. So that is something very important. It's also important the number of people that are coming for the festival here to Marbella, around 700 people, that are having a direct impression of what Marbella is about, and even opening the possibility of them coming to film uh, some uh, films here to Marbella. So, uh, in, in all aspects, it's something very positive for the city, and we are very proud and appreciate the effort that Mag is doing. Uh, with this project. And we can look forward to the Marbella Festival every year. It is going to be a, a regular, regular feature. Yes, that, would, what, that is what we want and uh, we would like to bring more people on board in the future in order to turn the film into an icon in the film industry uh, in Spain. So that is uh, one of our aims for the future and um, I'm sure that uh, with all the effort uh, we all together we will be able to get it. Well, from what I can see this evening, it's been a great success, so congratulations and we look forward to next year. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm here with Pulkit and Russell, who have a film showing here at the festival. Uh, can you tell us more about your film, what it's called, and just general information? Yeah, it's called The Forgetting Game, and it's a 70-minute documentary that tells the story of the first person ever uh, legally transported across the Berlin Wall in 1963. So it's a historical documentary but it follows the life of this little girl from five years old when she came across the wall up to present day where she lives in Wasilla, Alaska. It's a, it's a pretty wild story. So what actually prompted you to do something like that? Well, we were, uh, Polkett and I were watching a lot of propaganda material from the 1960s, US propaganda material primarily, and it's all really terrible. It's people uh, being murdered and maimed trying to cross the wall, and it's, it's, it's really awful to watch, right? And I'd grown up hearing the story about this little girl who was just allowed to leave. And so it was trying to rectify those two histories, right? Those two very different histories in a, in a filmic way. Steve Klein at the Marbella Film Festival, who actually has a film showing here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your film? Yes, well, uh, it's, a, it's a film called Ball Breaker Don. It was quite, Ball Breaker Don. quite yeah, an off quite the memorable. cuff, quite an uh, off the cuff guy. And he's sort of the guy in, in us all that you know, we can rely on. He's a tough guy, really. And uh, he looks after world issues, he cares about people. And it's quite crazy and it's funny, and uh, he tackles some quite unusual subjects. So, uh, and are you actually the ball breaker, Don? Is that yes, I am ball breaker, Don. Good evening, you know. So there you go. <laughs> and so, what, what what inspired you to to start this film? Have you done filming before? No, it's the first ever film, and uh, you know we made it to the festival, you know, and we was picked out of 14 shots out of a thousand films. So we're very honoured, 
Uh, Tim Knight uh, directed it. James Gomez produced it. Carlos did the filming, uh, the filming, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just an exciting place to be. I love Marbella, and uh, this the film's it's a really interesting game, you know, the film world. So uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. So it's a new experience for you, this film. World? It's a new experience, but probably life is an act anyway, in a lot of ways. So uh, yes, I think it's a, to, you know it's just an extension of ourselves acting, you know. So uh, there you go. So. Uh, and do you think we might be finding this film elsewhere? Can we find it on the internet later? Or well, we're going. We actually, what's happened is we've been approached by somebody. I don't want to mention names at the moment. No, no, no. no to no. make an actual full-length movie. So uh, I'm hoping to come back over here in the next two months and finish the script, and uh, go from the short to an actual full-length movie and have people in it. And uh, so it's got a lot of twists and turns. And. Uh, I think it's different. People seem to like the character because he's very, very different, and uh, so there you go. Quite an outspoken guy, so you can develop your character, and hopefully we'll see uh, we'll see more of him. Well, who knows? So uh, as soon as we get a proper demo, I'll be in touch with you. So all the best for 2011 for the Marbella Film Festival. And for you too. Good luck. I hope and the film's great Thank you very, success. very much. Ciao. Yeah, Brandon. You know, like the group said, you know, we only use them for funerals these days for the buyers, but. I'm here with Kristen, the filmmaker of Forms of Identification. Kristen, could you tell us something about your film? So Forms of Identification is an experimental dance film about identity crisis. It follows an artist's struggle with identity crisis as she is experiencing chronic illness. And so we think that the film um, will speak to anyone, though, who, is experience, who has experienced debilitating loss of some kind, whether it's a death or a sickness or some life change, and you know what you go through when all of a sudden all of your circumstances have changed. So the film basically asks the question, how can I be me when I'm not me anymore? And this is something you've sort of obviously experienced yourself to be able to make this type of film? Well, the film is an autobiographical portrait, a poetic portrait of my friend and collaborator, Jessica Ingersoll Cope, who is a modern dancer and choreographer in San Francisco, California. And so this is actually her own life experience. And me being a friend of hers and her artistic collaborator, you know, I was able to work with her and empathize with her throughout the process of filmmaking. So, you know, it wasn't my own personal experience with identity crisis, but it was my artistic it. collaborators personal experience with identity crisis, yes. Okay, well, we'll certainly look out for the film and, and wish yeah. you every success. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Well, look who we found, only Les Dennis, here at the Marbella Film Festival. Les, thank you very much for coming to talk to us. Well, the thing is, is what brought you here? Well, a, a film called Wounded brought me here. Um, I have a, 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 a nice cameo role in it, and it's a really interesting um, film about a guy who comes back from Afghanistan, and he um, has seen something in Afghanistan that he felt that he should have intervened in and didn't, comes back and sees a young boy not being very well treated by his family um, and takes him and runs away with him. And it's a really interesting film about this guy who has got post-traumatic stress but wants to help this young, young kid. Really beautifully made um, by Tom Large, Joseph Baker, um, Big View uh, Pictures. And I was uh, very happy to play Barry the ice cream seller. <laughs> That's not what you kind of, you don't really put Afghanistan and Barry the ice cream seller in the same sentence, do you? You don't, do you? Well, well uh, basically, the guys are on the run and from, the, from this kind of abusive family and obviously from the authorities. And uh, there's this guy, Barry, in an ice cream van who gives them a lift on their way and he turns out to be a father's for justice. He's, um, he, he's, so he's, he's got sympathy with their, with their plight, you know. And it was, a, it was a kind of comic relief moment within a very interesting and very dark but, but engrossing film. Very serious film. So is that a film that we might be able to see in the UK or on general release? We would hope so. You know, that's what these guys, you know, I mean, that's what's so interesting and really enthralling about this evening is that all the, all the in, independent filmmakers who are here are trying to make sure that we are not just force-fed 
popcorn movies by the big studios, and that's very important. You know, we've seen some great stuff here. You know, I saw some really interesting and um, and innovative films this weekend. So, it, you know, that's what we're all about, really. Yeah, that's why these festivals are as they are, and people yeah. get seen who yeah. be seen. So, just a, a quick thing: what can we expect from you? Got anything exciting coming up? Um, I will be in the new Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant sitcom called Life's Too Short with Warwick Davis coming up very, very shortly. Because you are a star in extras, I have to say. <laughs> that was an incredible performance you Thank did. Thank you very much. Well, I'm doing that. And then I go on tour in Legally Blonde, the musical. So a lot, a lot happening. So it's, it's great. You know, I've got like... A, Extras was a kind of reinvention for me, and and out of something like that came roles like the role of Barry in in a movie like this, because I think people sometimes pigeonhole you and put you in in a little box, but these guys didn't. These guys saw something and wanted me to play this guy, so um, we've had good success with it. That's fantastic. Well, good luck with the film. I hope Thank it really you, is a big Sam, success, and, and with everything else. And and good luck with the future of the Marbella Independent Film Festival. It's a great it's a great event. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Cheers, Thank Sam. You. Thank you. I'm here with Dan and Matt, who have a film sharing here at the festival, The Four Year Plan. Could you tell us something about the film? Sure. Um, several years ago, four years ago indeed, uh, some billionaire businessmen took over a bankrupt football club, professional football club in London called Queen's Park Rangers, uh, in the, second, the second tier of English football with the aim to get them into the, the Premier League, basically, and they, they set out uh, uh, four years time span to do this and they did it in four years however that's only half the story obviously so is it basically a documentary or? it's com it's entirely observational documentary yeah we follow the board from a boardroom level the football club and they're they're quite high profile owners um, so it's very much like about the finance of football also as well but they've been quite open and not worried about the cameras being there well, and catching all these things i suppose when you film something over such a long period of time you become so entrenched that people kind of forget that you're swinging a camera around and you, you tend to slink into the shadows so that was kind of how it worked on this one, yeah. And for someone like me who's not necessarily a big football fan, is it something that, that would appeal to me? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we got quite a lot of uh, positive feedback from people after this reading today, actually. And a lady came up to me and said, um, I hate football, but I couldn't leave. She was the, she thoroughly enjoyed it as a story because it is, it is a, a very, very interesting story. It is not just about the game itself. It's about everything that goes on behind the scenes. And will we be able to catch it somewhere else? Is it going to have a release in the UK or that's what yeah, you're saying? Absolutely, for? absolutely. We're looking for a limited cinematic release probably and then obviously television and uh, video on demand, DVD. The interest in it is, is, is pretty strong back in the UK, so I think we're in quite a good position. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a pleasure to be here and screening it in Marbella. It's, it's a, a very nice place so, to be. Yeah. Well, thank you both very much very and uh, all the very best of luck. I hope it goes well for you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thanks. Thank you. The nominations for Best Animation are Interview, directed by Hyun Won Kim. The Man with the Stolen Heart, directed by Charlotte Boulay Goldsmith. And the winner is Interview. Uh, yeah, it's a real shame that uh, he couldn't make the uh, gig tonight, but, um, well, you can trust it's going to be in the safe hands with me. So. <laughs> Nominations for Best Short Short Film our films less than 10 minutes are Eric, directed by Paul Winter, La Kumare, directed by Gianfranco Borgatti, and It's Over, directed by Chita Farid. Let's look at some clips. <laughs> Nominations for Best Short Film are Deserted by Glenn Sigma Torre, The Other Soldier by Paul Hatsini Coletos, and Dr. Sack by Gilmaz Buruku. Hi, 
and the winner is The Other Soldier. The nominations for Best Documentary are A Balloon for Allah, directed by, I hope I get this right, Nafis Oscar Lorenzen. Salam Rugby, directed by Paramaz Beheshti. And The Four Year Plan, directed by Matt Hodgson. When a boy learns in school that he's better than his sister, his sense of justice is clear. Best documentary is. Sorry, today it's brilliant. The four year plan! And we've come to the end of the Marbella Film Festival. It's been a fantastic time. Three days of wonderful international films, shorts and documentaries. We've spoken to the filmmakers and the movers and shakers here at the Marbella film industry. And from three days, it's going to be extended to five days next year because it's been such a huge success. So we look forward to seeing you again here this time next year. I'm Samantha Doricott, Soto Grande Television. Good night. <laughs>